Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we're here to do a mid-year check-in for the Read Like My Subscribers Challenge. Are not familiar, in Bookmas of last year, I announced a year-long project that I was undertaking in 2024 where I was going to read, like y'all, my subscribers. This was not only to get to know you better, but also to kind of push me outside of my comfort zone, as I knew that a lot of the recommendations I was going to be getting were books that I normally would not have picked up on my own. So in that video, I asked you to leave me up to five books that you wanted to see incorporated into this project. It was completely up to you how you chose to recommend me books. You could have included your five favorite books of all time, or maybe just your five favorite books of 2020. 23, or maybe you were just recommending five books that you absolutely wanted to see me read to see what my thoughts and feelings on the books were going to be. However you wanted to make your recommendations, that was completely fine. And then I took all of them and I added them to the challenge cup, which you see me pull from every single month when I do my monthly TBR videos. Now I did want to quickly mention that it is absolutely not too late for you to participate in this if you would like to. I am doing it throughout the year, even if I do reach my original goal of 24 books, because that was the goal of reading 24 in 24. So basically two books a month that were recommended recommended by y'all. And even if I hit that number, I'm still going to be continuing with the project because they are in my challenge cup, right? So if I pull them, I'm going to read them. So if you wanted to go ahead and leave your recommendations here, you are absolutely welcome to. I only have a couple of caveats that I ask for you to consider. One is that they have to have an audiobook because that's primarily how I read. And also like no manga, comics, graphic novels, because I really don't read any of those. And also I really wouldn't be able to listen to those via audio. And then finally, I just ask that you don't really recommend nonfiction memoirs just because I feel like those are really subjective. And if I don't don't care about the person that I'm reading about, I'm really not going to enjoy the story. So you're almost guaranteeing that I'm not going to like the book by recommending a nonfiction memoir to me. So really that's it, but everything else is kind of fair game. You can recommend whatever you want to me. And I wanted to kind of quickly come on here and do a check-in to let you all know how I've been doing with this project. Now I'm not going to be diving too deeply into the synopses of all these books because there are quite a few of them, but I will give you like a brief overview of what the book was about, my experience with it, who recommended it to me, etc. I also did want to mention that if I read a book throughout the natural course of my reading, that was something that I maybe already owned or was already on my TBR, but it was also one of your recommendations. I did count that towards this project because it would have been something that went into the challenge cup anyway. So those books were counted here, even if I wasn't originally reading them as part of this project, if that makes sense. So the very first book that I have here is a book called Morgan is My Name by Claire Leach. This was recommended to me by the lovely Elle is in Wonderland. And this was definitely something that I never would have picked up on my own. This is a very much historical fiction retelling of Morgan Le Fay, who, if I remember correctly, was was the half sister of King Arthur. So you're definitely following her early life in childhood through up until I want to say the book ended when maybe she was in her 30s and all of the trials and tribulations that she endured. And I remember really enjoying my experience with this one for the most part, even though it is not something that normally would have struck my fancy. I did remember being very engaged with the story. I felt like Morgan Le Fay was a very strong woman and she had to endure a lot in these early years of her life. And I think she was a very fascinating part of mythology. So I did really appreciate my reading experience of that one. I also appreciated my reading experience of Last One at the Party by Bethany Clift. This was recommended to me by Nana, so thank you so much to Nana. Now this is actually a sci-fi dystopian and it follows our main character who finds herself as the only living person in, I want to say like the UK area. There is some kind of sickness that ravages the area and she is literally the only person left. She is pregnant and it is about her trying to survive. And for the most part, I thought that it was a very interesting exploration and it really makes you question what you would do in this situation. What would you do if you woke up and you found that you were the only person living in your area? I will say that some of the things were a little bit hard to listen to because there was a scene where she went to the zoo. And as you can imagine, these are animals that are all trapped in captivity and there's nobody there to care for them anymore. It was the same thing with dogs. Like there was a scene where she went through this neighborhood and just let all the dogs out because what else was she going to do? Their owners were not around anymore. And that's just like really scary to think of because there are so many animals these days that are currently reliant on us. And if something were to happen to us, what would happen to them? So that also got me thinking about that. And I don't know if that was the author's intention, but that was just like part of the whole experience. So ultimately this was really good. And I do recommend listening to this on audio because it definitely helps you more immerse yourself with the main character. And I felt like the audiobook narrator really got into the story, especially during the childbirth scene. The childbirth scene was definitely a little bit more reminiscent of a graphic audiobook in my opinion. So she just did a really, really great job with that. So this was another solid start to this project. So thank you again to Nana. 
Hannah. Next I have Crooked House by Agatha Christie. This was a recommendation of course from Jared, my lovely friend and subscriber who is basically in a monogamous relationship with Agatha Christie at this point. She's almost consistently reading an Agatha Christie so naturally all of her recommendations to me were Agatha Christie books and it was fine. I gave it a three stars and I do see how the twist in this story probably would have been shocking for the time period in which this was written but of course you know if you've read a million thrillers there's like nothing too terribly much that can shock you these days but overall I thought it was a pretty easy read. It was really easy to fly through and it was engaging for the most part so I had a good time with it. And then next I read Fourth Wing which was a recommendation from Amanda over at Amanda Booktopia. This of course was one that was already on my TBR. I had already owned the book and I already had plans to read it and everything but it just so happened to work with this project as well. This is of course is a fantasy romance that has been absolutely sweeping the interwebs. A lot of people absolutely love this book. I went in and I had a fantastic time with it. Do I think that it's overrated? Yes just because I don't believe it is so incredibly fantastic that it deserves all the hype that it gets but I can understand why so many people really really enjoy it and I will absolutely be continuing on in this series. So I gave this a four stars another great reading experience. Unfortunately my next attempt was not so successful. I attempted to read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This was a recommendation from MLL at YouTube and unfortunately it was a DNF. I'm definitely not a big fan of historical fantasy and I'm definitely not a big fan of cozy historical fantasy and that's exactly what this was. I just found myself really not caring. I found myself very very bored. This was about a person kind of a scholar on all things fairy and she was compiling a very comprehensive book about all of the fairy life. I didn't care about that part at all and that's what I felt a lot of this was and this is also supposed to be like a romance between Emily Wilde and her colleague and I didn't really like her colleague at all. I had some problems with the colleague and I just didn't care about their relationship so I got a part of the way through and I actually asked like is this gonna get better? Should I continue to stick it out? And a lot of people said well if you don't really like it now you're probably not gonna like it later. So I just went ahead and did myself the favor and DNF'd it. But I do count this towards the project because it was something that I wouldn't normally have picked up had not been from your recommendations. So I am including it here. Another less than successful recommendation was Autobiography of a Face by Lucy Greeley. This was recommended to me by Aunt Rachel. This was quite an older autobiography that was written I want to say in like the early 90s. I had no idea who Lucy Greeley was but apparently she was a notable poet in the 90s and she passed away. This was like a memoir about what happened when she underwent I think it was it was some kind of cancer that really ate away at a portion of her face and she was partially disfigured and what that meant throughout her life because this happened to her when she was quite young and what that meant for her identity and her feelings of being attractive and beauty and sexual and all of that stuff. And this of course was a recommendation that was given to me kind of before I put the caveat out there of not recommending me nonfiction memoirs because I just if I don't care about the person that I'm reading about I'm not really going to care about the memoir and that was the case with this one. Luckily it was very short. I was able to fly through it. I didn't rate this one. I don't typically rate like nonfiction memoirs because I feel a little bit icky doing that especially in this situation because I feel like I would be reading her experiences and that's not my intention especially since I didn't enjoy my reading experience of it right so I didn't rate it at all if I had to I'd probably give it like a two stars you know that's just because you know it's not my thing and so to be fair I didn't rate it at all and we're just moving on. I also read Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano for the book club that I helped run over on Goodreads but it was actually another recommendation from MLL at YouTube and unfortunately it was another one that I really didn't care for. Fun fact is that I had actually started this book at some point I think it was like last year and I DNF'd it. There was just something about the book that wasn't working for me and so I DNF'd it. And so when it came up as a selection in my book club I was like okay well I, I guess I need to go ahead and give it another chance. And luckily I was able to push my way through it but it was not an enjoyable reading experience. I'm not entirely sure why this book is so highly regarded and for a character driven story I didn't care or connect with any of the characters. So that really hindered my reading experience of this. So unfortunately this was another kind of dud for me but it was one I would have needed to read anyway for my book club. So it is what it is. And then a really random recommendation that I ended up pulling was Dachshund Through the Snow by David Rosenfeld. This was a cozy mystery recommended to me by Janine. So thank you so much to Janine. This definitely is not one that I would have ever picked up for myself. Y'all know I'm not a cozy mystery girly. This was just a quick, short, cute, fun Christmas read. I think I read it in like February. So it was definitely after the Christmas period. And I think the main thing that really stands out to me about this story is that our main character is a lawyer and he's a big dog advocate. And so there was a lot of helping dogs in this, which I very much appreciated. This is certainly not one that I would ever revisit. I would not pick up the series or anything like that but it definitely did work for this project. Next I picked up Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This was a recommendation from Nakia. So thank you so much to Nakia for this recommendation and I had a good time with this. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling so it's kind of like a little smutty book. I really don't have any complaints about my reading experience. It is exactly what you expect it to be going in and I really had no problems with it. It was a good fun fast time. Will I be continuing in the series? No just because I don't care enough to continue in the series but that's not to say that the first book was not enjoyable but for this first book in that 
that series. I thought it was a good fun time. Next, I ended up reading The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. This was a recommendation by Deacon Girls 4227 so thank you so much for the recommendation. This of course was actually already one that I physically owned and was already on my TBR so I was very happy to get to this. This follows our main character Mila who was a Russian sniper during World War II. She became known as Lady Death and so you follow her in the past as she's becoming a sniper and all of her confirmed kills which I believe exceeded 300 by the end of her career. And then you're also following her in the present day of this story which is in the 1940s as she's going to America and she is meeting President Roosevelt and she's striking up a friendship with the First Lady. And overall it's not my favorite Kate Quinn but I still really enjoyed my reading experience of this. I think Kate Quinn is just such a solid strong historical fiction author and she does a really great job of bringing the characters to life. So this was a solid four star reading experience for me. Then I picked up The Haunting of Blackwood House by Darcy Coates. This was recommended to me by Rogue Rosie so thank you so much for that recommendation. This is another one that I had a really good time with. I have kind of mixed feeling on Darcy Coates because I had only attempted two of her books prior to reading The Haunting of Blackwood House and The Haunting of Ashburn House was okay. I didn't really start enjoying myself with that book until later on in the story when everything was starting to get revealed and I definitely think the creep factor was amplified at that point. And then I DNF'd From Below which was quite a big shock to me because that of all of her books really should have worked for me as somebody who is terrified of the deep ocean and what lies down there. You know what I mean? But I DNF'd it because I couldn't connect to any of her characters. Luckily The Haunting of Blackwood House worked for me in a way that The Haunting of Ashburn House and From Below did not. I felt for the most part like I got a little bit more of the characters and I ended up really enjoying the story of that. So this I would say was a hit and I think I gave it like a 3.54 stars. And then next we have another DNF and that was Bunny by Mona Awad which of course was recommended to me by Jillian. So of course Jillian thank you so much for the recommendation. Jillian knew when she recommended this book to me that I was probably not going to finish it and if I did that I probably was not going to like it. I do not like weird stories. I gave this one the good old college try. I got 30% of the way into it before I decided to DNF and I was like you know what I cannot take it anymore because this was going in an extremely weird direction and I just didn't care. I didn't like any of the characters. It was just a little bit too strange for me so I DNF'd it. Then the next recommendation was actually a little kind of novella. It was called Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. This was recommended to me by my sunny reading corner 6777 and you know this book gets a lot of praise. A lot of people really like this novella and I didn't. I think that there was just something about it that I was missing. Like I think I understood the point of the story but, but I was like what is so amazing about this story? I didn't get anything out of this story and that actually upsets me to the point where I want to take this book from like maybe the three stars that I rated it down to a two just because I absolutely felt like I wasted my time with this story. So yeah unfortunately this was not a hit for me. Then I actually had another Kate Quinn recommended to me that was The Huntress and this is recommended to me by Craig Hines 888. Now like I mentioned I really enjoy Kate Quinn overall and I would say that this is still a solid historical fiction. Unfortunately it just happens to be my least favorite Kate Quinn to date. I think I gave this like a 3.5 stars and that's because I really feel like there was a missed opportunity about this one. This is a story that is called The Huntress yet you get very little of The Huntress. You definitely don't get her perspective throughout this story. I feel like there was a very very big missed opportunity with that. Instead there was a past perspective of one of the characters that was featured heavily in the more present perspective which in this book was like 1950 but yet she was given her own entire perspective in the past as we were building up to where she is in the 1950s and I just didn't care about it. I felt like we could have had the Huntress's perspective because I also really don't feel like we ever got to know why the Huntress did what she did. She was supposedly this vicious killer during World War II but you never find out why because it doesn't sound like she's working for the Germans or any part of the war effort. It just sounds like she's like a horrible human killing people to survive. I'm not really sure because I don't feel like that was well established in here and like I said that's why I felt like this was a missed opportunity. Like I said this was still overall a solid historical fiction. It just was my least favorite Kate Quinn to date. Next I picked up Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This was another recommendation from Elle is in Wonderland. This is a fantasy romance that follows vampires and we have our main human character in here and she is competing in a competition against a lot of other vampires to be granted basically a wish from the goddess of the story which is the goddess Nyaxia. And so you're following her in this competition and how she teams up with a couple of other vampires and also like a budding romance that happens with one of them. I had a really really good time with this. I will absolutely be continuing in the series. You can see that I kind of tabbed it up a little bit there. So this was a solid recommendation. I decided to go ahead and add this to my TBR just because I really wanted to know what all the hype was about. It's not necessarily a new favorite but it was definitely a solid good time. And then the final DNF that I have so far was actually Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. This was another recommendation from Janine. So Janine I am so sorry. This was another one that was already on my TBR and I picked it up because I believe it was in May. It was one of the punishment prompts that I had was to read one of your least favorite books so far for the year and somebody mentioned Dark Places and luckily I already had that on my physical TBR card so I picked it up and I made it a good chunk of the way through. I think at least 25 to 30 percent and I was just like you know what I really don't care. I don't care about absolutely anything that is happening in this book. I definitely don't like any of the characters and I just don't think 
that Gillian Flynn is the author for me because I really didn't like Sharp Objects at all and I really don't think that Gone Girl was as amazing as everybody seems to think that it is. Not at all. Like not even the twist was all that amazing to me. Yeah but overall I just don't think Gillian Flynn is the author for me so I will not be reading anything by her going forward. And then the next two books luckily were huge successes and will likely be featured in my best of the year. First I have Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. Y'all already know how I feel about this book. I talked about it at length in one of my reading roundups as well as recently in the mid-year calm down tag that I did. I absolutely adored this book. This was a recommendation by Jess over at Average Jess so thank you so much Jess for this recommendation. I know that it was actually recommended by multiple people so multiple slips of this book went into my challenge cup but it was Jess's that I drew so that's why I'm mentioning her specifically. I love this. I've already pre-ordered the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of the copy that is coming out very soon and I'm so 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 excited to get to it. And then this next one again is one that I've talked about multiple times on my channel. It is certainly a new favorite and that is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This was recommended to me by Nancy Picard 3456. So thank you so much Nancy because this is certainly one that I never would have picked up on my own. I am obviously very late to the game on this one but I absolutely loved it from start to finish. The audiobook was fantastic. It was narrated by Will Wheaton and I was just completely absorbed in the world and the competition and definitely all of the 80s nostalgia. I can absolutely see why this book gets all of the love and the praise. I don't think I will be continuing on with Ready Player Two. I've heard nothing but really terrible things about that and I think that's just because this book is so beloved and it would be really hard for anything to compare with this. My love of this one is just so pure, so complete, and I don't want anything to tarnish that. So absolutely love this. And then oddly enough, the next book that I read as part of this project was another recommendation from Nancy and it was actually The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. This was just a cute contemporary story that kind of reminds me of the movie Big by Tom Hanks. It follows our main character who makes a wish on one of those wishing machines to kind of skip to the good part of her life. And so she does. She goes forward like 10 or 15 years. I can't remember exactly how many years. She's married to a great man. She has children and everything is going really well for her in her life. She's got her dream career. But of course she has no idea what is going on because she didn't live those years. And even though everything is going great for her, she doesn't remember all of the pivotal years that got her to that point. So she's really wrestling with this because as much as she obviously starts to grow feelings for her husband in the present day and she starts to get to know and love her children, she didn't get to build those bonds naturally. You know, she's just kind of being thrown into this life that's hers, but it's not hers. So you're following her. She's struggling to fit in with this life while also still yearning for the life that she was desperate to leave behind. So I thought that was very well done. I had a really great reading experience of that. I think I gave it like a 3.5 stars. So it was solid for sure. Then I picked up The Storied Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. This was recommended to me by Whispers3661. And unfortunately, this one was a bit of a disappointment. I would say that this is probably the Gabrielle Zevin that is beloved the most outside of Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. And unfortunately, I just really didn't get the hype behind this one. I can understand why people love it just because the story is so very wholesome. It follows a man who is kind of a grump. He is a widower. He is still very much grieving the loss of his wife. He runs a bookstore on this island and he's very like acrimonious. You know, he doesn't get along with too many people, but it's following him as somebody leaves a baby in his bookstore and he chooses to raise that baby and it's following him as he's raising her and he's falling in love again and everything. So in theory, it should just be this really heartwarming, wholesome story. And in some ways it is, but I was really wanting a little bit more substance behind it. This was so short that I didn't get that connection to the characters that I really, really wanted. And additionally, it skips chunks of time because it's so short. You know, it skips years and years and years. And I really just feel like it would have been better had it been over a smaller length of time. So you get more in depth into the life of AJ Fickery, into the life of the baby that he's raising and the new love that he's experiencing and all of that stuff. So the time jumps and stuff really further disconnected me from the story. And unfortunately, it didn't work for me like it worked for anyone else. So this was a pretty big disappointment considering how much I know that a lot of people really loved it. All right, now we are down to the final two. This next one was already one that was definitely already on my TBR. So I didn't necessarily pick it up as part of this project, but it was one of your recommendations. It was another recommendation from Jess over at Average Jess. And that was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Y'all know that I'm a Sarah J. Mass stan. I absolutely love her books, her worlds, her characters. This was the fourth book in the Akatar series. It was the last book that I needed to read in order to catch up with this series, as well as the book that I really wanted to read before jumping into House of Flame and Shadow. This is Nesta and Cassian's story, and it was not my favorite. I ultimately ended up giving it a four stars, and that's purely just because of like the last hundred pages. The last hundred pages really sold the story for me. The first, I would say at least 500 pages of the story was just Nesta being awful and her and Cassian having sex. Now, I know that this was really written to give Nesta a redemption arc because if you've read the original Akatara trilogy, she's not the most likable character. And you can definitely see that exacerbated in here because she's certainly dealing with the trauma of what she experienced. So you're definitely meant to feel some aggravation towards her, but you're also meant to empathize and sympathize with her because you understand where she's coming from. Now, of course, over this massive 751 page book, she certainly starts to grow. It's a very slow burn 
burn character development. By the end, you definitely appreciate Nesta more, but this was not my favorite. It's probably one of my least favorite of Sarah J Maas's books in general. I did not feel like this needed to be this long. I felt like it could have been cut down by several hundred pages and would have been better overall. It would have been better paced. It would have had more impact on me in general. So yeah, I did give this a four star, but for the most part, my overall reading experience is probably closer to a three. And then the final book that I've read so far for this project was The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. This was yet another recommendation by MLL at YouTube. So thank you so very much. This is one that was only on my radar just because I had seen it going around and a lot of people were really loving it. I went into this one with no expectations and ultimately I really enjoyed it. This is kind of touted as a magical realism, but ultimately there really wasn't any like speculative elements that I could see in this story. It just kind of had whimsical vibes, if that makes sense. It follows our main character. She is a teacher's assistant and she is desperately wanting to adopt one of the students that she works with closely. He is in foster care. His parents are dead. She has grown a very tight bond with him, but she is not able to adopt him just because she's not in a very stable situation. You know, she doesn't make much money. She currently lives in a house with several other roommates. She doesn't even have a car. Like she's not financially secure enough to adopt this boy, but she loves him tremendously. And one day it is announced that the author of her favorite childhood book series is coming out with another book, but not quite. He's only got one copy of this book and he is going to invite several people to his magical little island in a chance to compete for the one and only copy of this story. And then they can do with it what they want. And so she receives an invitation and there's a very specific way that he's inviting people to this competition. And you find that out throughout the story. But basically he has a connection with each of the people that he is inviting. And she goes out to the island. She competes against a handful of other people in these kind of wacky games in order to win the prize. And I just thought that it was so wholesome and so sweet. And you know me, I'm not really a big child person. I'm child free by choice. I don't love seeing children in stories, but I really did like the child in the story. And I appreciated her relationship with him. And I could just feel the love that she had for him. And she was willing to do anything she could to get him out of the foster care situation. I liked it. I think I'm going to be picking up a copy of it from Book of the Month, as well as her newest release, which just came out, because that does seem like it's going to have a full on magical element as it's based around the Chronicles of Narnia. I think I do want to read that one. All right, everybody. So that is where I currently am with the reading like my subscribers challenge. If I counted correctly, that means I have successfully completed or attempted 21 of your recommendations, meaning I only have three more to go to satisfy this project. So like I said, your recommendations are still in my challenge cup. So if I pull them, I'm going to read them. And that's why this challenge is not closed to more recommendations. So please feel free to leave up to five books that you would like to see included in this project down below. And if I haven't read them already, they will be included. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of this project. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I've read so far and what your thoughts are. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me an emoji that you feel maybe corresponds best to one of your favorite books. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to see you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I feature in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye. Thank you.